the APM, the Access Policy Manager here that F5 has. And so we are now uh, going to be joined by Jason Wilburn and Chaz Leslie. Um, and if I remember right, Chaz, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and disclose your location. You're sitting in a college dorm room. Is that right? So let's just keep it real today. I am. It's just one of those things that we have to do sometimes, isn't it, John? It totally is. You you know, hey, when life throws you lemons, you, I don't know, you go to a college dorm and you hang out, right? Indeed. So Pretty good to go, like man. That. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what's the food options? What are the beverages in your little mini fridge there? But we won't even, we won't go there just yet. We won't go there just yet. I think we all but, remember it's Top Ramen, right? Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me exactly of a Marine Corps barracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, I love all the decorations on the wall. It does look like a military <laughs> barrack situation. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, hey guys, Chaz and uh, and Jason, thanks for being here. I know that um, I know that you guys wanted to run through uh, just the the wizard of how to set up the APM, the vi the Visual Policy Editor. Um, mm -hmm. So let me just turn it over to you guys, and you guys can help all of our viewers understand. Hey, this is how you get started with our SSL VPN solution. Sure, more than happy to do that, John. Uh, I wanna say thank you for inviting us. This is uh, by far going to be an exciting moment for me because I, I finally made it to YouTube. Love it. <laughs> and, my, and my 12 year old is actually watching right now. So I'm being- Huge fan. Uh, I'm <laughs> Jason's All 12 right. year old, hello. Just so you know, your father is super famous right now. So get his autograph yeah. later, later today. All right. All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, I want to go ahead and kind of show uh, one of the most basic ways to implement the v VPN, and that is using what we call a wizard, right? And if we see here, right, there is a network access setup wizard, and I'm going to go ahead and click next. And what this is going to do is walk us through how to do a basic setup of that VPN uh, connection. So if I go ahead and click next, it's gonna pop up and what it's going to do is ask me for the name of my policy and I'm waiting. The fun of live demos, huh, John? Yeah, hey, there this we go. is- uh, the There we go. There we go. There we go, so finally. So it's gonna ask me what the name of my policy is going to be. I wanna go ahead and in this case, I wanna disable these endpoint checks because I wanna actually add some endpoint checks later after I show you how the policy just works functionally. I'm gonna go ahead and click enable full web top and I'm going to describe a web top once I actually get access to the VPN and I'll show you what a web top is. So if I click next, All right? The next thing it's gonna do is ask us, how do we wanna authenticate? Uh, the important thing to note in this wizard is, is that these are not the only ways that you can actually authenticate to APM. These are just some of the basic ways that we can authenticate. And if the, and if the authentication method here is not listed, such as things like SAML or OAuth, uh, just simply you would select the no authentication method, and then we would configure that after we're done with the wizard by going in manually. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a basic setup, so I'm just gonna go ahead and configure it for Active Directory. Go ahead and click next. And then it's gonna ask me to configure what are my settings for my actual Active Directory domain. I'm gonna go ahead and select f5lab.local. Lab I'm going to enter in the IP address of my domain controller, the name of the domain controller. And as this is just a lab environment, I only have one, but it typically in a production environment, you're gonna have a whole host of domain controllers that you would have to add individually add here, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a service account that I'm going to actually use that in the event that I need to do like a query to the domain controller just so that I can do a more fine grain authorization control, something like a group membership or some sort of actor directory attribute that I want to key off of. I would use this service account here to query actor directory to gain that kind of information back. All right, then I'm going to click next. The next section here is just defining what the IP range is going to be that the clients are going to get from the lease pool. So when the clients connect to the VPN, what address range do we want to give? Uh, in this case here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click my start and end IP range that I'm gonna do here, click add, and now this is added here. If I need to add additional ranges, I can simply just define them here and click add, and then I would add. these would show up in the lease pool as well. Uh, one important thing to note that we do support the ability to do IPv6 addresses in the lease pool as well. So if you have customers that need to do that, that's there. We'll go ahead and click next. 
and we'll wait for the wizard. Love it. I think I yeah. think one person a second ago said, "Hey, did you pay homage to the to the live <laughs> demo gods?" To, yeah. To make sure. And Jason, I think it's important to note here, right? There's a lot of flexibility here. This is just getting you guys started, right? You can run through right. this within right. just a couple of minutes, a few minutes, get it get it deployed, and then you can kind of extend that solution pretty dynamically, as Jason will show just a minute. Correct. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out here is David was talking about compression and how to disable compression. Right. By default, if you're running the wizard, there is no compression enabled. Uh, the other that setting that David had mentioned was DTLS. If just by simply clicking this box here, when I run this wizard, it's actually going to create that DTLS virtual server for me. And one last option that was mentioned uh, during the pre previous segment was the concept of doing split tunneling and defining how to decide what was going to go over that VPN connection. In this case, I'm just going to define an IP range, but you can see down here that there is the ability to do, do, do a DNS address range as well, or space. So if I go ahead, click next, now I've defined my internal DNS range. That way that whenever I want to connect to something behind my the big IP APM, this is the only IP traffic that'll go across the VPN. I'm going to click next. And just a little bit of notes from the field here, right? Uh, as David said, as we look out and work with customers directly, we, we you know these performance things that uh, David talked about are, are critically important, as is the routing elements with the lease pools. Uh, you need to make sure that you're looking at your networking architecture or you're routing those lease pool addresses back to the F5 or are they layer two adjacent or are they L3 routed? Making sure that that flow is contiguous and solid is probably the number one problem we see in just the configuration of VPN deployments. All right. Uh, just, just to pause for a moment, John, I noticed that there was a question about DTLS 1.2. Yeah. Uh, somebody was asking about that. Uh, we do not currently support that today, but it is on the roadmap, and uh, Chaz will have to keep me honest. <laughs> I want to say it's the next version or the version after that. I can't remember it's, which it's, one. It's, it's it's pending quickly. We'll leave it at that. Yes. that yeah. Something yes. that we're looking at. We're skipping over 1.1 going right to 1.2. Yeah, it, it's it's a near it's a near term roadmap item. Let's put it that way. So, yeah. And thanks for Lucas for the answer on the on the chat. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And Damon oh. Damon Delvecchio also jumped in there. So yeah, appreciate you guys. I love yeah. I love pending quickly. I may steal that one. Chaz, yeah. it's a beautiful term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I accidentally clicked over this too quickly. Uh, so this is our DNS settings and our local host record settings. So if we need to implement something here to when somebody connects to the VPN, change their host file, we can do that simply here. I'm just gonna go click next for my default. Uh, then the most important thing is what's the IP address that your users are going to connect to, right, from the VPN. And if I leave this box here connected because this is an SSL VPN, uh, I want to have a redirect virtual server as well so that if somebody tries to connect to port 80, it automatically flips them to port 443 to connect. I'll click next. The other key piece here is that this is a wizard, right? And, and, and right. so we're just building objects. They're not tied like an IAP, but you don't have to uncheck to track changes. Once you build this, the objects are built and you are free to manipulate those. And this is just a footprint to get you rolling very quickly. Right. That's right. Right. Uh, these are the settings that I specified throughout the wizard. I click next. And then it's going to build all those objects, assuming the demo gods co cooperate, right? And so it <laughs> built all these objects. Uh, so uh, as we talked about with the wizard, if, if, if I were just to do this naturally, I could do this within just a matter of minutes, right? And if I simply go up here to click on my browser and go to vpn.acme.com, I'm going to get connected. I'm in my... It's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to get the web top, right? And this web top, um, we had talked about VDI early in the earlier segment. This web top here can actually host multiple resources beyond just VPN. So everybody could just go to portal.hackme.com and this could host your VPN, your VPN resources, your web-based resources, your routers and switch icons. Uh, anything that is essentially web-based or VDI-based can be hosted here from this web talk for one for all of your users to actually get to. And that's a critically important concept, right? Because now you're kind of 
making this easier for the customer coming in, right? Not only can they get their layer three VPN access if it's required or allocated to them by maybe group membership, but now they can get to all other resources and they can be MFA at the same time, be them on premise or in public or private cloud, or if it's the VDI deployment and you're docking maybe RDP, uh, David West brought up a really great uh, uh, comment about just getting to your desktop, right? Having it all here local in one yep. in, in one fail swoop. Okay. Let me go ahead and click next. This is going to fire the plugin. Uh, I would like to point out that I'm getting an SSL error, and that's because I, I need to swap certificates right now. By default, this just uses the standard certificates that are self signed on the box. I'm going to click yes. It's going to fire the plugin, and this VPN will connect here in just a matter of seconds. It's going to throw up another SSL warning to me here in a second. But why that's going, one of the things that I would like to point out is that you can access the VPN from the web browser. But if you notice down here, I actually have a thick client installed as well. Uh, this thick client is actually able to be installed on your mobile devices. So if you have like an iPad or an iPhone or some sort of Android device, we do have a thick client that can be installed on those devices as well. Cool. VPN a mobile connected. client, right? F5 access yep. that we can run on the mobile client platform yep. or you have the thick client uh, that can run on uh, on a, a Mac or a Windows platform, there's a Linux client as well that has uh, yes. uh, some of the functionality, right? We don't need a GUI there, so we have more limited functionality there. But, yep. uh, but you know, an easy way to get onboarded and to get into the solution if yep. you're not there. And the last thing I'll kind of comment before I get back to you, Jason, is, you know, whether you may have another VPN, right? You may have some other, but, you know, in times like these where we're all kind of moving remotely, and let's say that's not available or it's at capacity itself. It's always nice to have, especially for you system admins out there, another way in so that you can make sure that you can support your your customers or the staff that you're servicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before we hand it off, I want to go ahead and click log out here. And I want to show uh, one of the most powerful pieces about Access Policy Manager, and that's visual, and that's the concept of visual policy editor. And what that's going to do is it's going to show how a user moves throughout the life of that policy. So if I click access and I go to my profiles and per session policies, when somebody connects to big IP APM, the first thing that happens is they go into this concept of this workflow here, right? And they end up in this start branch. And you'll notice that there's these little plus icons here. Anywhere along this workflow, I can add additional checks or different authorization controls to change the behavior of that session for that individual user or for a group of users. So in the case of like posture assessments, uh, the AP APM has the ability to actually go in and interrogate a device to find out things like, are there firewalls turned on, their antivirus turned on, those types of things. And simply by going, clicking that plus icon and eventually the demo gods will cooperate and they will give me the tab that I want, right? I'm going to click this tab here that's called Endpoint Check Secure. And I'm just gonna go client side and you can see there's a whole host of endpoint checks available to an end user. I can click firewall, click add item. And the next thing you know, the next time somebody tries to connect to that VPN, now I'm actually going to interrogate that device to see if they actually have their Windows firewall turned on. And you can notice up here that I can actually check it throughout the life of the session. And, and, and Jason, you're right. And then and I know we need to wrap up because we need to get to the next yep. segment. But I mean, the visual policy editor gives users the ability or admins the ability to really make this extensible, right? Now you have a base that you can build upon yep. and extend with all kinds of other risk telemetry yep. that's coming in. Um, yep. Really powerful tool. Yeah. Anywhere along these branches, we can build conditional checks. I kind of think of them if then statements. Right. Yep. If this do that, I, I love this. Uh, also, the VPE because it really is such a visual thing. I mean, it it says visual. It really is visual. So it's not just a yes. textual. Hey, I'm going to try to follow. I mean, it's a beautiful picture of of exactly what is actually going on. So um, and, and our demo. and our logs actually match exactly what happens in this workflow. So you, if you're ever wanting to just understand how somebody went throughout the life of the policy, if you go look at our log files, you'll see success this, fall back that, fall back branch, and you can essentially go, okay, this is where somebody went through that policy pretty quickly and understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. 
Well, Chaz and Jason, this has been extremely productive, very in informative. So I appreciate your expertise. I appreciate your time today to go through all of this setup. I think uh, I think our customers are going to be, you know, better off for it to, to know, you know, how to set these things up. And so it's a, a beautiful walkthrough. So uh, as someone said before, uh, Chaz and Jason are not just F5 famous. Now they're YouTube famous. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks so much for being yeah. here, guys. I really appreciate your time today.